I just finished recording a session with Christine Lang, a medical intuitive who sees energy. I learned so much. Buckle your seatbelts because she gives practical tools right up to the very end of this podcast that are going to help you clear your energy and protect you against lower vibrations in a way that's going to keep you healthy and definitely happy. Enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Messages of Hope. I'm very excited about my guest, guest today. Christine Lang is a medical intuitive. She's also a medium. I can tell from the conversation we just had. So we'll bring her into that conversation as well. But I'm so interested in medical intuitives, and I know we're all going to get a lot out of this. So let me introduce you to her. Christine, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I, I love this show, so I'm happy to be here. <laughs> well, you just bring beautiful energy to it right off the bat. I was introduced to you from a previous guest, Marcy mm -hmm. Shimoff. Yes. This came about very quickly. I know you have a book that I'd like to talk about, but I unfortunately haven't had the chance to read it yet. So we definitely want to talk about your book so you can give me the cliff notes later. <laughs> sure. But let's just start by the very interesting fact that you are now a medical intuitive. Let's start by you telling what that is and then tell people the backstory, which is very unique. Okay. I, I tell people I'm a medical intuitive and a soul channel meaning I can see the energy in your body and hear your spirit, my spirit and different healing guides. And, and so I'm channeling at that soul level. And I started off as an attorney. So it's not your typical career path, just like that's, you didn't have a typical career. Path. That's the part I was talking about when I found out you were an attorney, that just makes me laugh. <laughs> so many people in our, our awaken way community are these left brain uh, people yeah. who uh, have, you know, Many of them have advanced degrees and they're in professions that we don't normally associate with being interested in this, but that's just a stereotype that's going away. Well, I think, I mean, I think we're of similar age. I think so many of us were raised to, to worship external power. And we all sought that as a form of mastery. That's what mastery in our culture meant growing up. And, and I think this journey is about realizing it's really a journey to internal power. And, and that will take you from attorney to me. It'll take you from, you know, government service to being this beautiful medium. I think it's, it's recognizing that internal power that we all have when we can access it by being authentic to our gifts. Yeah. And, so, and I, I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, but I've, <laughs> I've met so many attorneys who went into it because it was that symbol of success and it was important. And then there are many paths within uh, the legal realm, but then they found out it just wasn't that interesting to them. And yeah, well, yeah. it's absolutely, it's it very much, you know, I was, I went to a, a top law school. I was lucky. And, and, but when I came out, I said, you know, far from worshiping God and the universe and, and healing, I worship money and power because that's what we were taught to seek in law school, right? Those were our, our metrics of how successful we were. And, wow. and so in my second year of law school, I developed allergies and wasn't asthma, but it was just constant runny nose, sneezing. I sounded like the sick kid. <laughs> and this was before the days of the meds they have now that don't make you drowsy. So my options back then were take Benadryl and drink Diet Coke all day to stay awake in my law classes or walk around a box of tissues. And both those options were not very fun. So when I got out of law school and my first job had me in-house counsel to one of the large banks and I moved to the East Coast and my allergies went even more crazy. Mm -hmm. And I just said, that's it. I got to find something. And I started studying what was then called alternative medicine. And it was homeopathy, herbs and supplements and using homeopathy because it's very logical. I was able to get rid of about 50% of my allergies and, and ended up teaching a study group for the public for the National Center for Homeopathy because I just thought it was so amazing to do. And, and I made the link between my stress and my allergies, oh, more stress, more allergies. And so I started taking yoga and Tai Chi and studying Buddhism and started a meditation practice just to calm down the stress of being a lawyer. And and my Tai Chi instructor suggested you should go, you know, get a Reiki attunement and start doing energy because you're seeing energy. I said, oh, no, I'm a lawyer. I don't see energy. That's too airy fairy. <laughs> and she, they know you were seeing energy. Because she could see energy and she was watching me move it with my hands. We we're doing oh. Tai Chi. But were you aware you were seeing it? 
No, because I, I decided I couldn't see it, right? That's not what I do. I'm just here for stress management, right? I'm still in my left brain, you know, male energy. And so I, I learned to do Reiki and, and I would say to some friends, before I give you an energy treatment, let me come home, take off my lawyer suit and sit in my meditation chair and just meditate to change channels in my brain. And when I would do that, I would just know something about them, why they had the back pain, why they had the migraine. And I, it took me a while to get up the courage to just say to my friend, hey, does this mean anything to you? And her eyes flew open and she said, that just happened this morning. How do you know that? And I said, I'm not sure, but I think I'm getting information. Oh, cool. And and this was yeah. 30 years ago. That was not as widely known about as it is now. And the, the third time it happened with a different friend, she said, who are you talking to? And I went upstairs and sat in my meditation chair and I connected and raised my energy up and my spirit said, welcome home. And tears oh. were streaming down my face. I know. <laughs> yes, yes, and, yes. And she just said, get ready. This is who you came here to be. And I would sit in meditation for three or four hours a day. And she would just say, this is what it looks like when someone stores stress in their liver. This is what it looks like when this is starting to occur and they're getting you know, insulin resistant. And she just started showing me patterns of energy and what they can lead to in the body, depending on how each person internalizes stress. And so when you was, say she, and I heard you earlier say my spirit. Yeah. Is this so, okay. So here's how I describe it. And tell me how this, how this aligns with how you discuss it. I think of your soul as sort of a sunbeam from God, right? It's a divine source energy. And as that sunbeam comes down to the ground and touches the earth, it's given a physical body with an ego mind. That's like a blank hard drive. And you might choose the parents based on how you want to kind of get your hard drive programmed. Oh, I want scarcity issues. So I'm going to choose parents that go bankrupt or I want this, you know, so so we choose that and where the soul and the ego overlap is your spirit. Your spirit is say 80% your soul and 20% your ego. So when someone's, you know, dead aunt Patsy came to me the other day, I said, there's a person coming to me and she has, she's wearing a lot of hats and she carries two Siamese cats. And she's like, oh, that's aunt Patsy, right? So there's, there's enough of the ego essence that stays with that it's identifiable and, and has that personality, but it has that soul's intention. So, so there, there are times where I will go up even higher and connect directly to the person's soul, but the, the information tends to be more, I don't want to say generic, but things like all is well messages that while they are true person saying, do I quit this job or not? <laughs> they want the specific info. So then I'll drop down a level and speak to the person's spirit. Okay. Yeah. We just have some different vocabulary and that's fine. So I'm just trying to sort it out who, when you're, when you are talking to a person's spirit. That mm -hmm. is their soul plus the role, the ego. A little bit of the ego so that the soul yeah. is, is informed with what that person's goals are and desires are. Because we come here to experience ourselves as creators. And so we need an ego to have wants to create. Yeah. Okay. I want to make the beautiful garden. I want to start a podcast, all of these things. So that's that overlap that I understand. Yeah. But when you hear advice and you say, she tells me that's your soul, the higher yeah, self, my, my spirit, my soul that, and I refer to it as the, as the pronoun of, of how the person identifies now. I mean, in reality, all the listeners of your shows have probably had hundreds of lifetimes because they're old souls. So they've been every skin color and they've been male and female multiple times. So truly it's, it, it's gender neutral. But when I say they, people get confused because they think I'm talking to a group of, of guides. So I tend to refer, I'd refer to your spirit as she and your husband's spirit as he, just to keep it clear. Okay, good. We, we have some difference in how we see it, but you know, it doesn't matter as long as it works for us and what we bring through is helpful to people. Yeah. 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 Maybe we'll sort it out when we cross the veil or not. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think that that, I think how we, the people that we're meant to work with help inform how we're going to, what our vocabulary is going to be, how, how we're given information because there'll be people that, so I was raised Catholic, Italian Catholic. And so I know that informs some of the languaging that I started with early on. And I used to get, I had a Catholic nun who used to come see me and a rabbi who used to come see me for sessions. And they say, we're just comfortable with the language you use. And as, as my language has evolved, my clients have evolved. Wow. And there's such a period of expansion that we're in right now, as you know, that's just so intense and people are showing up with more abilities, more desire to connect to their abilities. And it's, it's, you know, just so impressive to me how that's happening. So, yeah. And it's exciting and it's fun. Yeah. So 
this Reiki person saw you moving, Reiki master saw you <laughs> moving and he said, you can, you can do this. Take us from there. How this unfolds. So, so when I realized it was my spirit and she's, you know, teaching me how to do this, what she taught me was that your symptoms are sort of this physical solidification. Your chronic symptoms are physical solidifications of, of stress or of something that your spirit is trying to give you a nudge about one way or the other. And so when I can get the message contained within that symptom, then the energy work sticks and the, and the resolution is right there because the, the body doesn't need to hold on to it anymore. And so it was so powerful that the three or four friends that came to me, their symptoms went away and then they told their friends. And all of a sudden I had strangers in my living room and my first husband said, I think you have a practice because I don't know any of those people down there. <laughs> so huh. that was 27 years ago. And Wow. Now I teach classes and, and teach people how to do the energy healing work, but also teach them how to connect to their own spirit. And I always say my goal is to put myself out of business because everybody can hear their spirit for themselves, right? Yes, yes, yeah, yep. Okay, cool. So your sessions, have they changed over this 27 years or? Yeah, I mean, it's always about 45 minutes of me channeling and the person gets to ask questions. And I always say, it's like your spirit sitting next to you speaking French and I'm just, the three of us are going to have a conversation and I'm going to translate. And my, my, my guides like to say, your ego mind yells and your spirit whispers. Oh yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So I'm just giving a louder voice to your spirit. And most of the time when I say your spirit says this, people go, oh yeah, that really resonates, right? And it's empowering to be plugged into your truth more fully. So. I, I just shared, I, we're going to talk about you having monthly classes, but I do a monthly webinar too. And I just shared the other night in my webinar about this one woman, I was doing the same thing, channeling a message. And she, when I finished, she's gritting her teeth. And when I finished, she said, the whole time you were talking, I wanted to go, eh, eh. <laughs> she said, but I kept listening because darn, I knew it was true. <laughs> You didn't the want game show that. buzzer. <laughs> yeah, she wanted the buzzer. She she knew it was true. <laughs> wow. So these like the nun and the priest who came to you must have heard by word of mouth. Are do they do pe most people come for physical challenges, medical issues? Yes, I would say the majority of people find their way. It's it's all word of mouth. I've never advertised, but but the, most people come to me because they know somebody who came to me and 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 had a chronic symptom that either Western medicine couldn't figure it out. Or Western medicine knows what it is, but you know, it's back pain. And they're like, well, here, here are your meds that you can take. And they don't like any of the side effects. So then they're willing to come and say, okay, what's the emotional causation here? And sometimes it's, you know, a, half of it. And sometimes it's 98% of it. And, Shut and up. the more emotion that's, that's stored in there. So for instance, frozen shoulder, frozen shoulder is a really good example of something that's locked up in you that you're not allowing yourself to process because you think you'll be disloyal to somebody or you think you're betraying how you were raised or something. And when I can just tune into the energy of someone's shoulder that's frozen and ask their spirit about it, it usually within 20 minutes, we'll get enough information. The person's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. And you can just, you watch it just start opening up as they give themselves permission to feel what they're feeling. And then with their spirit's help, we process those feelings in a way that lets them release that. And then the healing can begin. And then they might want to do physical therapy or, or have another session, but, but to just know, oh, that's what that was. It's just, it's such a relief for people. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Goodness. So tell me about this seeing energy, how you opened it up, because that intrigues me. You said you didn't want to see it or you weren't aware you could see it, but now you see it beautifully. How did that happen? So when I first started hearing this information from my spirit, she said, you know, you're getting little glimpses. And what she said is when, when you go to the grocery store and you go to pick an apple and your hand reaches out and then you go, mm, I want this one instead. She said, if I asked you, why do you want that one versus that one? You wouldn't have been able to tell me. But the truth is the first one you went for fell on the floor a few minutes ago. And when the grocer picked it up, he grumbled. And so there's a little negative energy around it. So you made the decision based on energy. You just didn't realize. And it's why you, you know, people reach back and tilt one, you know, cereal box back and pull the second one out. And if you ask them why, like, I don't know, I just didn't want that one. Right. And it has to do with the energy of it. And so we're making decisions based on energy all the time. And so my spirit coached me to like, don't worry about it making you strange as an attorney, you know, just embrace this. And the more I opened up to it, the more I started seeing more and more what she was showing me. And when I look at someone's energy, 
it's not like I have x-ray vision and I can see, oh, there's the break in your ankle. I can see it. It's that, that your spirit will show me a visual of it. What does and that look like? It'll look, it's frequently, it's almost like a cartoon expression because it's, it's simplified. I don't have to see every tendon, every ligament. They show me, this is where we need you to focus your healing energy. This is why we need them to take this homeopathic remedy. And here's where the break is. And so I've had people who've had like chronic foot pain and the x-rays show no fractures, but they'll say there's four little minute hairline fractures underneath the foot and you're not really going to see it. But if you put healing energy in and they wear shoes with really good arch support for a few weeks, it'll go away. And it does. Oh, right. So, so that those sorts of things that are just undetectable. And, and if somebody's coming to me for a medical situation, I always invite them send me a photo of yourself and two sentence description of what it is. And I will connect with a person's spirit. And I always want to make sure I can get information because my, the question I ask is, do I have a role to play here? And if the person's spirit says, no, I want her to find the acupuncturist that just moved into her area. Well, then I'm getting out of the way. Oh, right? I and love so that. What a beautiful point because, you know, I teach mediumship and many people will say, well, why didn't I get a connection for this person? And okay. we'd say, you just have to trust there's a reason. And it could yes. be we're meant to see some other medium who's going to get a different piece of the puzzle that will get the message they want. I love that you told a story once on one of your monthly classes of a woman, you know, waiting a long time to get in with you and you got nothing. And you said, in the beginning, I would have pushed through and tried to force the connection. And this time I knew like, come, let's do again in a week. And her son came right through. And it's, it's just, that's how I think once you get abilities, that's how you bow and surrender. You know, is yeah. that's the grace for me is to have that. So I always ask if I have a role to play. I spend a lot of time doing that, but to me, that's my integrity, right? So I will never waste somebody's time or money. And I'd rather know that and, and let people find who they're meant to work with. Yeah. So what you described to me about, you know, the, I love the story of the apple and it was just dropped. That one's a negative one. This one's not. Okay. It sounds to me like you're seeing images, getting the, the, the knowing from higher up on the screen of your eye, not like objectively seeing a field around an apple, or is that the way it is? Both. Okay. Both. So, so I, I never go where I'm not invited. I don't want people say, don't you just like walk around the grocery store and look at people I'm like, no, first of all, people aren't all that interesting, right? We all have the same kind of stressors <laughs> and it's just a lot of information. So I kind of walk around like a regular person and I, it's sort of like changing channels in your brain, as you know, right? And so you tune in to and, and when I, the one exception to that is if somebody coughs or sneezes near me, I will say to my spirit, show me if there's danger. And she will show me if there's virus or bacteria. And there's a certain type of snowflake pattern that she shows me. So I know if it's virus or bacteria, then I know to move away, cleanse myself of that germ before I get sick. And I recently was at an event and there were a lot of teachers and coaches and, and practitioners there. And one woman had just traveled from India and she was coughing. And this third time she coughed, I looked out and I'm like, I, I don't want to be in her business, but spirit, show me. And I saw the bacteria and I said, I hate to be rude, but do you mind if I kill the bacteria I can see in your lungs? It's making me uncomfortable. And she was like, oh, I've been coughing for a month. That would be so fabulous. And the next day she came down and hugged me and said, I feel so much better. <laughs> so wow. those I trust that. And she said, I couldn't believe how much I was coughing. And I said, I think your spirit wanted to make sure you got the help. Right. And that's why it came to my attention. I, we were all seated at different tables. I happened to be at her table, right? There's no coincidences and all of that. So that's the one exception where I will, I will look where I'm not invited just for my own protection or the protection of the people I'm with. But otherwise I wait until I'm invited in. What I'm hearing is you're not just a medical intuitive. You are a healer. You had the Reiki training, but how did you heal that woman's bacteria in her lungs? So over the years, my spirit has taught me a lot of skills and I, my skill set's always improving and increasing, right? Our abilities yeah. just keep expanding, which is so fun. And yeah. so I've learned to kill viruses and kill bacteria and, and to hear the pacing of it. So if I, if I ran into and you'd had a cold for a week, I might not kill all of it at once because there are now so many cells, it would completely overwhelm your lymphatic system and you'd feel worse. And you would call me and go, Christine, thanks a lot. <laughs> now I'm now I feel worse. And and so I might, you know, take three treatments over the course of two days to to kill it, move it into the lymphatic system, and then use energy to move your lymph system and clear it out. But 
all of that has, you know, when I was a baby healer, I would just use energy like a microwave to fry it all. And the person would just call me and go, I'm never coming back to see you. I feel worse. And then, you know, oh, wait, I did get over my cold in one day. Well, yeah, the rough way. Right? So I've learned to have more finesse with it. But each year as different things come to me, like when COVID came about, it took me a little while to learn, you know, how much to kill at once, how to do that, how to help the body clear out the dead molecules. It takes about six weeks usually to filter all the, the dead molecules out of the blood, which is why people have that brain fog for six weeks. And so there's different things we can do to, to shorten the time period and help people through it. And so I'm always learning new skills. And and there are times where somebody's spirit says, you know, you're, that one, we, you don't have an answer for that one yet, right? As a, as a population. Like what? Like when AIDS first came out, mm. I wasn't allowed to do it. But what I was told was that there was another virus that people were getting that was giving them partial immunity. So when people got that cold virus, I wasn't allowed to kill it. Huh. Wow. Yeah, there's, just like, there's so many magical layers happening in the universe. And that's one of the things I try to convey to people is just how much we're getting assistance all the time and we don't even realize it. And I know that's part of your message too, right? Of just, it's all around us. There's so many beings who want to, inspire us and help us heal and guide us. How do we take advantage of that? Well, well, one of the ways I think is we were all raised in our culture, mostly to see the body as this thing that has to be, you know, beaten into submission and you don't like that symptom. Here's a pill to, you know, make it go away. And I encourage people to see their body as something they're in partnership with and, and that it contain. it's like, we're a place where your spirit leaves messages for you. So I'll think of it as like in your core center truth, you'll feel a little wobble during that conversation with your boss or your coworker, or a little wobble when you're on the phone with your brother. And we usually just say, oh, I'll, I'll think about that later and later never comes. And so we store that stress in the body and eventually it can turn into symptoms. And so when we, when we learn how to have a conversation with our body and go in, in like a, a guided meditation we can go in and get that message. And I, I actually created a guided meditation for your listeners. And <laughs> there's a link below um, that is, you know, uncovering the messages within your body. And, and people will tell me they do it every couple of days, whenever they feel creaky in their knees or just to check. And sometimes it's just you're stiff because you went for a run yesterday and you'll feel there's nothing that needs to be done. But other times your body will will just tell you, here's how I want to move you into a little more alignment, a little more alignment. It's usually not drastic things. You know, it's usually not, you have to quit this job or you have to tell your brother off. It's usually, here's how you can make these adjustments to decrease the stress in your life and feel like you live in with more integrity with your core values. So what I hear you saying is that you, know, you, you have created this beautiful guided meditation. I listened to it and right away, the energy is just... Nice. Clear and clean, beautiful energy, a free, a gift that the link, if you're watching on YouTube is in the description there. I'm not sure how we get it to podcast listeners. Well, they can always find anything on your website, which is yes, yes. But um, what about people who are not used to listening? You say, you know, sit here and you'll, you'll get an idea that you're supposed to do this or that. What if people just aren't that attuned yet, that intuitive yet to hear that, to sense that? Yeah. So one of the things that, that, you know, we hear as, as practitioners, we'll hear other practitioners say, well, you have to be present moment. You have to be in the present moment. And one of the things I found frustrating when I was new on my journey is, well, how do you get there? Right. And, and what my spirit taught me is, Tuning into your emotions and how it feels to be you right now is a surefire way to bring you into the present moment. Hmm. I actually have a short exercise I can walk people through if you want to do it, unless you're oh. driving. If you're, if you're driving, please don't do this. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> no, we love exercise. We love stories, anything practical to help us. Absolutely. Okay, great. So What's our intention? So this is to help you know something that is true for you okay. right now. Okay. Okay. So it is going to help you tap into your emotions because your emotions are part of your internal guidance system. And so by, by feeling something that is true for you right now, you feel more in alignment right there. Okay. Okay. So thank you for that clarification. So if you will close your eyes and picture all of the energy in your energy field traveling in towards the center of your chest. Sometimes I picture there's a black hole in the center of my chest and all my energy is like starlight. It's all being attracted into the center of my chest. And 
Nice. You can usually tell as your energy starts to gather in the center of your chest, you will take a deep sigh or your shoulders will drop. <laughs> Suzanne just did, just did that. <laughs> <laughs> and that tells you, you've brought more of your energy home into the center of you. Now I ask you to imagine that your thoughts about what you think you feel right now are like litter, like pieces of ash and soot right in front of you. And a wind is just going to come and blow those away just to clear the picture here. Nice. Now I ask you to travel into the center of your chest, right in the center of your body. And when you get there, I'm going to have you ask, what does it feel like to be me right now? And a word will float to you. And something that is true for me right now is... Good. And then you bring your awareness back into the chair you're sitting in and open your eyes. What did, what came up for you? Oh, too personal. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'll share when I did the exercise this morning. So I've never done that exercise before. A guide came through that I think is actually somebody who, who works around you, Suzanne, because it felt new and different. And this guide came in and suggested this exercise. And what I assumed I would feel was pressure and frustration because I had a bunch of emails that I had to get to and, you know, the usual busy morning. And when I blew the thoughts, all that went away. And when I dropped into the center of me, what the first word that came up was gratitude for a really gentle conversation I'd had with a friend that went really well this morning. And then gratitude for my husband in a way that he supported me last mm -hmm. night. And I was like, yeah, the, I do feel those. And it was this strengthening because it's calling forth those things that are, in, that are in alignment with my core values. I wasn't even aware I was feeling them. And I'm like, oh, I would have hate to have missed that because I'm caught up in my sob story. If I have too many emails and blah, blah, blah. Right? So, so that, that coming back in touch with what your true emotions are is really helpful to people to get present moment and to get in alignment with themselves and then they, they speak more from their truth from that standpoint. And I have people who do some version of this exercise four or five times a day who are in the creative fields, who are screenwriters. And they'll say, man, we're so creative when we do that. Yeah. yeah. Because it gets your, your you know, literary thoughts out of the way and helps you get alignment with that real creative juice that, that those creatives have. Just that pause and the getting centering to, to get real clarity that's not coming from the ego self that is yeah. arising, bubbling up from source is just a fabulous tool. Thank you for that. Sure, sure. Yeah. I want to go back to this seeing thing. It's a very personal question for me too. So you talk about seeing the energy around people. You see this objectively, but do you have to, and do you have to change a channel metaphorically to see it? So let me permit me to answer your questions by coming at it a little sideways. When, when I had young children, a guide came in and said to me, do you know the babies, all infants can see energy? Mm. And I said, I didn't know this. And they said, when you're pre-verbal, it is how you get, how you get information about if your world is safe. And they said, notice when you go to hand the baby to somebody and it cries and you take the baby back and it stops crying and you hand the baby to somebody and it cries and you take it back and it stops crying. Like they saw gray, brown or black energy on that person because they could have been frustrated or sad. And usually those are the people that want to hold the baby the most because it helps them feel better. Oh, right? sure. Upgrade energetically. And they're like, pay attention. If the baby cries or fusses and doesn't want to be held by that person, honor that child's choice. And I was like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. At what point did I, did I lose the ability to see energy that I'm having to work so hard to do it now? And they said, you know, those pictures that they used to have in, in gift shops that were made of dots. And they're like, you know, do you see the, the two unicorns? I'm like, I see nothing. I see nothing. And I, you know, the 10th time I look at it, I'm like, oh my God, they're the unicorns. And then I can't not see them. Right. Once your brain gets trained and they said, that's because there are certain spatial ways that we learn to see and a certain synapse connection that, that if it's not used, will open. And when you start holding the intent, let me see the unicorns, let me see the figure in those dots, those two, those two little neural connections link back together. Oh. When you're an infant and you can see energy, you have those neural connections, 
But around two years of age, when we start putting a word to everything, we teach our children and we were taught, if it's real, it has a word. And we never say, see the pink around that person? Because we can't see it as adults. So knowing this, when my children were young, which is when I found out, I started saying to them, oh, I think that man has really lovely energy. And they would fill in the missing pieces for me. Yeah, isn't that a cool shade of green? And I'd be like, sure, I couldn't even see what color it was, but they could. So I, I feel that's what I could do to help them is I kept that alive in them. And, and still to this day, if you ask them, they're like, well, yeah, I just have to focus, but I could see they just don't use it very often because it's not part of their world. But so when my my boys were in elementary school, you know, I could get them to meditate. And by the time they got to middle school, they were too cool for that, right? And they were, it wasn't the cool thing to do. So I was asked to come in and speak at the middle school and do a presentation on Buddhism when they were studying China. And I snuck in there about meditation and seeing energy and the kids were fascinated. And so I had volunteers stand up and I would say, well, you have dark blue around you, which means you really want to know how things work. And they'd say, oh my God, that's so Mark, right? And everybody would laugh. And, and then I enticed the kids and said, if, if you want to learn how to see colors again, I can teach everybody how to meditate and we'll start working on that in each, in each meditation club meeting. And so we started the Wednesday meditation club and it went on for years and years, long after my boys graduated middle school and went on to high school. And those kids within a couple of weeks of holding the intent to see color would have those synapses connect. Some of their parents came and sat in the back. It took them almost till the end of the year to have that, those synapses connect. I would just say, hold the intent. Energy follows intent. Wow. So they held the intent to see the colors around people, to see the silver image around leaves of plants. And they started seeing it. And part of it is as, as you know, you know, you sort of have to go with it when you first start. We want to say, oh, I probably made that up, right? And you have to just have that faith of like, I'm willing to make mistakes and be wrong if I just get the wrong answer and play with it. And then you strengthen those neural connections. Wow. Fabulous. Did that answer it? <laughs> just yes, a long way yes. to get there, but. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. So, okay. So is it turned on all the time for you or do you switch it on and off? The scene? I switch it on and off. Okay. Switch it on and off. And yeah. just intention, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So you want to see somebody's aura and it's just, just that fast, no ritual, no meditation. No, no. And it gets faster and faster. My spirit said, think of it like wearing a path down in the woods to go up and connect to your spirit, how you connect now, right? You're so fast when you're connecting to, to Sonia, when you're connecting to it, it's so fast for you because you've been doing it for so long. That path is well-worn in the woods. But the first few times I was like taking a machete through the woods, right? It might take me an <laughs> hour of meditating to get one phrase about a person. So when I first started my practice, I used to sit in meditation for one to two hours before a person came for an energy session, just so I could talk to them and give them a few sentences. And now I can channel a paragraph if I want to, right? It's it's right there. But that took time to get out of the out of the way, so to speak, yes. to allow that flow to come. So likewise with seeing the colors and seeing things on people, you you one, you trust that it's possible and it helps to have other people who do it, right? That you can witness. And then you just start practicing with it in th things you don't worry about getting wrong. Just like when you're practicing creating, I would say, you know, create the parking spot in front of the mall, create things that it's no big deal if it doesn't happen. Don't try to create the perfect job or the perfect, you know, partner. And, and so then you build up your confidence because it's playful. And we yeah. learn things faster with play than we do with the seriousness that most of us, you know, go about yeah. life with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, wow. So do you continue to focus exclusively exclusively on medical intuition or do people come to you for any kind of insights and guidance? So, so once you're once you're tapped in, as you know, right, you can use it however you want to use it. Mm -hmm. I don't call myself a medium, but if somebody's, you know, relative comes in during a session and says, by the way, this person is saying they're like, oh, that's Aunt Bonnie. She always used to say that, right? That's fine. I if the, if they want a mediumship reading, I send them to you. <laughs> but <laughs> but but if they but, but we can use our gifts and abilities in almost any way we want. My spirit early on told me her only limitation for me is that I, I couldn't do um, finding miss, missing persons work because being at the police station and being involved in that was just too heavy and it would limit my, my healing light, how much came through. So that's the, I can't find things. You know, if somebody says, you know where I hid my, you know, lost my bracelet, I'd say I, in the refrigerator. I have no idea, right? I can't find it, but but really everything else I can do and move into. So a lot of but people- this will... is your calling, the medical part though, right? The medical part, but also the, the teaching of everybody connecting to their own spirit, right? So and tell us about that. 
So, yeah. so connecting to your own spirit is, is again, understanding that it's there and that your spirit is always wanting to guide you. Right. And, and part of our job is, is to just create the space for that and recognizing when we don't have capacity to actually hear our spirit, because we're talking all the time, we're super busy, we're in motion all the time. And, it, and, you know, my favorite expression of the Buddha is be still and know. Mm. And it is sitting in that stillness and, and it's its own surrender, right? Because our, our instinct is keep moving, keep moving. I have so much to get done. And our culture, you know, prides itself on everybody being super busy. And that makes you this productive, important person. So to just say, I'm going to sit and do nothing is hard for us sometimes to do. Especially, you know, as women where we're, you know, go, go, go all the time and trying to be really proficient, but to sit and do and have that stillness and, and open up that capacity within you that you're willing to hear and you're willing to hear like you're from with the buzzer, you're, you know, you're willing to hear what you're not expecting. One of my favorite questions to ask my spirit is what do I, what am I not seeing? Yeah. I, because the question is, is one of those things that opens you up automatically. You're acknowledging it's something that's out of your field right now. Right. You know, we, we don't know what we don't know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But we're not so, willing to look at. Yeah. Yeah. I have a number of different free guided meditations on my website to help people get messages from their spirit about particular things. I feel overwhelmed. Which thing should I do first? I'm beating myself up. How do I stop doing that? I, you know, I want to sleep better. There's different ways that your spirit can give you guidance and different ways that you can ask questions. Um, and so having that connection, that intention to sit and open is that first step. And I, I've been taught that there are three portals through which you can get messages from your spirit. And the first is your heart chakra and in the center of your chest. And the next one is in your forehead. And then the one through the top of your head. And the one in the center of your chest is, is we call your heart chakra, but that is frequently mixed with emotion and feelings and so this is the mom that's at home, but she knows her kid just fell on the playground at school, you know, that they talk about the mother's intuition. It's very feeling based. And so it can get really hard to distinguish, well, was that from my spirit or is that just my fear, right? Because it can get mixed up with our fears. But going up to the sixth chakra in the center of your forehead, when we gather our energy and move it up to there, those are what we call universal messages. They're true for everyone. So in when Tibetan Buddhists would sit and meditate there or Native Americans and other Native cultures, they would find an herb and their medicine people would sit and, and move their energy to the sixth chakra and they would say, this herb is useful for this. Well, that's true for everyone. When you, when you move your energy up higher to the seventh chakra, which is not what traditional meditation teaches, but when you do that, it, it's your access to your, it's your portal and access to your own spirit. And so when I first learned to meditate, I would move my energy to my sixth and my spirit would pull it up and I would yank it back down. That's, I'm not doing it right. I, I'm, my energy's out of my control and I would pull it back down. And we did this tug of war battle. And then finally she pulled it up and I heard a word and I went, Ooh, right. <laughs> and then I let it stay up there. <laughs> so, so now when I, when I teach people and I'm, I'm just in the process now of finishing up a book that I'm writing and um, it is, it is it's called ask your spirit. And it's all the step-by-step -step of how to make that connection and then how to ask questions and why your spirit will answer some questions and not others and why future questions can be tricky and 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 lots of things that you've you've talked about on your show as well but that understanding where where you want to move your energy to and why so in the in the meditation that i just walked everybody through that exercise we moved our energy to our heart chakra you can kind of pack it down like damp sand once it's there and move it up to where you want it to be and people can try when they're sitting really still and they've got time to move that energy up. And, and again, in the, the guided meditations that I made that are on my website, it helps to have music that vibrates at a high frequency as well, because that helps you hold your energy up higher. And so all those things support you having that opening to your spirit. And then I just say, look out, like be open to all of it, because you'll start getting messages in crazy places, you know, three people will mention the same book to you. And this person will, you know, give you this connection to that person and all these, the magic starts happening. And it's just sort of one of my favorite things to say to the universe is, okay, universe, wow me. And the day after I said that a few weeks ago, I got connected to you. Oh, cool. Like, oh, that's a good wow universe. Good yeah. job. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's, and, and I go in meditation, bring on the miracles. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah, the same okay. thing. 
you, you know, yeah. you're inviting that. So everybody, you know, come up with your own phrase, use one of ours, but be ready. <laughs> yeah. I, I put little reminders, um, where of little things that I'll find fairies on cards or, or, you know, neat little cards and I'll stick them around the Let's house. See, we got to, a little reminder. There, there you go. go. There you <laughs> go. Little, little visual reminders that there's always something kind of sparkly around the next corner. And, and I love that, right? I, that's part of why I have plants and flowers and stuff all around me all the time. I just, the energy of that, right. Uh, just helps you stay in the magic of it all. Right. Absolutely. And it, and it also, I use those little, little visual cues to help me keep my energy field clear. Because I think, again, if they're listening to your podcast, they're older souls. And as older souls, we are more energetically sensitive. And so if you're more energetically sensitive, I was, I was sitting in meditation this morning and my spirit said, you know, the irony is so many of you old souls heard you're too much as kids and you're not quite enough at the same time. You came away with these really conflicting messages of, I need you to be more of this, but stop asking so many questions, right? <laughs> or whatever that is. And, and so I think we get hypersensitive to, I don't want to, you know, seem like a complainer, but I can't handle the energy in this bar right now or this restaurant or... I don't really want to be in this movie theater. It feels really uncomfortable. And learning to sort of honor that, that feeling and trust what we feel. I, I teach a monthly class now called Your Energy Matters because your energy really matters, right? And you need yeah. to keep your energy field clear. And I teach all different just quick techniques to shield yourself from energy that isn't really helpful to you and to clear yourself of unwanted energy. Would you briefly give us a technique for each of those? Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, if it's okay with you, I'm going to ask your spirit to choose which ones. Do you mind if I connect to your spirit? Please. <laughs> what I love is that this morning when I said, oh, I'm Suzanne is on my calendar today. How fun. Instantly, I felt this heaviness in the room as all these beings showed up and I was like, who's here? <laughs> and and Not, I, not and they, heavy as in dark, just a big. No, just like crowded. Like, oh, wow, it got kind of warm in here. And and so when I connected and said, you know, who is this? My spirit said, oh, those are souls that just love to watch Suzanne's work. And so you're going to work with her today. So they're just like, oh, let's get in on this. And I said, well, do they have any messages? Or And they said, no, no, no. They just, they're usually relatives of people who listen to her podcast. And they're so excited to watch their family members get these messages. And they just like to be in on it from the start. Even when you're recording, they just love to be in on it. And so they just, they've been kind of following me around all day. It's about 12, 13 of them. And they're, they're keep a respectful distance, right? They're, they're not trying to interfere, but I just, just so curious. Amusing. Do you, do you see them or just fields? I felt first and then I noticed, oh yeah, there's an older gentleman and there's a woman and, and. But I have to really focus because yeah. that isn't what I, my primary goal to come here is, was my spirit was to be a medium. And so it's not, it doesn't come naturally to me like it does to you. I don't get the level of detail you do. Okay. Um, yeah. But I will, I will sense, oh yeah, there's somebody here. Um, so, so my point was like, I already know your, your team is here too. <laughs> so, yeah. So okay. Two practices, one for shielding ourselves from negative energy and then clearing. Okay. Okay, so the first they want to give you is when you're speaking with someone and it, it it goes a little out of control. The person starts complaining, it starts getting negative, and you're like, uh oh, this isn't going well. You can imagine dropping a sheet of glass in between you and the other person. And as you drop that sheet of glass in between, the intention you're holding is, I still want to hear them, I want them to hear me, and I'm happy to kind of shine my love towards them, right? It's like sunlight coming out of you. Happy to share that. I just don't want anything coming back that isn't healthy for me. And I'm going to demonstrate, I'm going to, you and I have this lovely heart connection going right now. I'm going to drop a sheet of glass in between us and you tell me when you feel it come down. Boom. Yeah. Very fast. <laughs> but, but only because you knew to feel for it. If you were in an office setting and we were, you, we were chatting about something and you were complaining about our boss and I did that, I don't think you'd know. No. Uh -uh. Right. And so people tell me they use it all the time. Their coworkers never know. Their family members never know. But it keeps you safe in that moment because we have that sort of dread of, uh-oh, this conversation is going dark. We're complaining about, you know, Uncle Harry again. And you don't want to cut the person off, but you don't want to be feeling that kind of toxic dump on you. And so that's one you can do. Oh, Another, Hang on. Yeah. This is so cool. And, and, and I know that you teach that this is 
because visualization is moving consciousness and you're creating that with your yes. intent. I just very quickly had one very similar to that, but it was you put up a mirror, a glass mirror between you and it reflects the other person's energy back to them. I yes. did this with my husband when he got all crabby in the car one time. And within seconds, he looked at me and he said, oh, I'm being kind of negative, aren't I? Oh, God, I couldn't believe he, he heard that. It felt That's it. awesome. It yeah. And for people like your husband who are who are loving and open and and have self-awareness, that works great. For some people who don't practice accountability for how they feel, they get defensive. They'll say, I feel like you're telling me I'm being negative. And I'm like, I haven't said anything. So I switched from the mirror to the pane of glass. So there's no, they don't have, it, it incites less reaction from them. Brilliant. So good distinction. If it's somebody that you think has good self-awareness and is open to that feedback, it's energetic feedback, but it's feedback, then I would use the mirror. If you think, uh-uh, that person has no interest in accountability or hearing what they're, you know, that they're being negative right now, then I would go with the sheet of glass. Beautiful. And I interrupted you. I think you were going to give us another one. Yes. Well, I was going to say that you can put yourself in a whole protective bubble. You can extend that idea to a protective bubble. So I have a little picture of like a soap bubble that's I taped to the dashboard of my car. <laughs> I love it. And so whenever, as we're pulling out of the driveway, my husband will say, we're shielded, aren't we? Right. And we used to have one of like a, a antique piece of armor. We've used different visuals because after a while I stopped seeing them, they don't register. So I switch them out with different photos. And, and so I shield us because just driving, people are so stressed when they're driving and I'll, I'll forget to shield myself and I'll go to the grocery store. And as I'm walking out, I'm like, I'm yawning and I'm yawning. And I'm like, it's noon. How can I be this tired? And I'm like, oh, and then I kind of check my energy, but I'm like, I picked up somebody's grief or somebody's, you know, frustration with their kids or whatever. And, and then I do some kind of clearing. So now we'll do a clearing exercise because it takes a long time to have it be automatic to shield yourself, right? We didn't grow up with that vernacular and we just don't think that way. So it takes, that's part of why I decided to teach as a monthly class because people bring questions and I'm like, okay, here's how you can shield in that situation. Here's how you can cleanse yourself. And it just takes repetition, like learning your times tables to just make it automatic. Mm -hmm. So yeah. let's say you forget to shield, you go to the grocery store and you drive home and you're like, man, that I just, I can feel like it feels almost like rubbing a cat the wrong way, right? You've got somebody else's stuff on you that isn't yours. And, and that first feeling is being uncomfortable in your own skin, hmm. right? I just don't like that feeling. So one of the visuals that I love is to imagine that you're laying in a stream and this creek is really warm water and it's got really soft pebbles on the bottom and just your face is sticking out of the water and your body is like a giant sea sponge and the water flows in the top of your head through your body and out your feet. And as you're holding that visual, you're saying, please cleanse me of anything that is not me. Yeah. Please clear me of any energy that is not my own, however you want to phrase it, but holding that intention. And, and you're right. Visualizations are a way for us to hold the same intent because we think thoughts so quickly, we can be inconsistent in what we're asking the universe for. So a visualization helps you hold the same intent long enough for it to work long enough for the energy to move in that direction. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Another one, I'll give you one more because your spirit just showed me this. Okay. I love when I, as soon as we decide to connect, like our spirits are in instant communication. I'll be in a session with somebody and my spirit will say, well, you know, it's like that movie she watched last week. I'm like, I don't know what movie she watched. And I say that and she goes, oh yeah, I know. Right. So they, our spirits just instantly trade all this information. So your spirit just requested that I share a, a, another clearing technique that I haven't used in years, which is when I would show up to somebody's house. As I would walk in their front door, I wanted to clear all the energy from the freeway or roads off. I pictured in a car wash at the end of the car wash where that air blows on you from all those jets, I would picture that in their doorway. So as I walked into their house, I was like, whew, all the stuff would blow off that was other people's. And so I walked into their house, that's just me. Well, th this is very validating because I know so many who watch us regularly will have had my classes and they're laughing too because- I have an energy clearing method that I call the car wash method. No. Yes. So very good job of picking up on this spirit to spirit communication that's going on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Your spirit is what I was like, really? You want me to teach that one? Cause now I know why. Okay. Right. Mine is more like visualizing this glittering wall of gold 
mesh in front of you and it moves forward and moves all the way through you like you're going through the car wash and it gets all the way back behind your aura and then it just for an extra credit comes back through the comes other way so through. very quick but picking up all the dirt and grime that doesn't nice soak. nice the car wash Pretty method good. that's hilarious that you have that. <laughs> not that's your the hilarious part is that our spirits knew it and said talk about this one i love yeah. Yeah. I love that when, when they help us give each other validation of our techniques, of our teachings, all that, where you really do see the interconnectedness of all of it. Yeah. Yeah. So maintaining optimal energy, you're talking about, okay, shielding here and then clearing. Uh, how about just ongoing practices? Well, and let's talk for a second about why that's important because when, you know, we have our own thoughts that produce negative energy of like, oh my gosh, I forgot to call that guy back and oh, I got to, you know, pick up dog food today or whatever those thoughts are that can cause our own little bits of static in our energy field. We don't need other people's stuff in there as well. And yet all of us are, if you're an older soul and you're very energetically sensitive, you're sort of like a piece of tissue paper. We're very absorbent of, of those things that come, that we pass through. And so- to, to understand that when you have a lot of this, these negative frustrated thoughts, it lowers your vibration. And so it lowers your emotional field of how you feel, right? And so to the clearer we can keep our energy field, the higher we vibrate and the happier we are and the more connected we are to getting messages from our spirit, the more intuitive you are. So it's, it's an investment in developing your own intuition to stay on top of what I call energy, energetic hygiene right? To make sure your energy feel like your energy field right now is super, super clean, right? So you have no That's problem right. connecting, <laughs> connecting to spirit, right? And, and you're, because you're doing this work and there's energy coming through you now, the little tiny bits of, of like soot or ash are moved way out to the far edges of your energy field, right? So that just tells you this energy is coming through and pushing that other stuff aside. But if you would just gone to the DMV before we work together, God forbid, right? Example. It's such a place. Well, because it's such a place filled with frustration. Hang right? on a sec though. We have a very international audience. So that's our department of motor vehicles oh, in every okay. state. And, there, and it's where you go to get a new driver's license or get a new license plate for your car. And there's always a long line and you deal with bureaucrats who have been dealing with customers and it's just not the most positive it's just experience. miserable it's miserable and everyone i swear they walk in there and they immediately frown right oh the line is so long oh nobody it's never moving and and it's just it is a place to go to pick up negative energy for sure so if you had gone to the dmv right before we started this recording and hadn't cleared your energy field, I would see the energy coming through you as the same white light that's coming through you and out the front of you and out your out your throat chakra, but there'd be more dark stuff on, on the edges, right? Because you had all that stuff that you hadn't cleared out of your energy field. So it would, it would limit a little bit how much comes through and how clear and easily you could get the messages. So that's why I teach people like, keep your energy field as clear as you can, because you'll vibrate higher and your body will feel better. Your physical body will feel better and your emotional body will feel better. So do we do the car wash daily or do you do something more? Uh... I, I can, I do the car wash just walking in and out of my office. If I have, you know, something where I'm just like, I, I can't believe I lost that. And I could just feel frustration with myself. As I walk through the doorway, I can do something like that. I'll do a version. And sometimes if I just think I'm I'm just overthinking everything, I'll do a visual where I'm standing up on top of a, of a mountain and I'm like a piece of Swiss cheese and there's air coming out in through the back of me and out through the front. And I'm just like, please release everything that doesn't serve me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, I have another one that, uh, that goes with, it's like the same humorous style as the car wash. I have a visualization of this shaft of white light and this other shaft comes up and just swirls around you, pulling out everything and it goes out the top. And I call that the <laughs> roto rooter method of energy clearing. But when I'll be in the car and if some if my husband gets a little angry at another driver, I'm sorry yeah. to use I as my example again, I'll feel <laughs> that energy and he'll see me. I'll sit here and I'll go... <laughs> that out sometimes i have to roll the window down <laughs> yeah let that stuff out let that stuff out yeah well my husband will be driving and i'll say uh we don't want to be near that car it's like why i'm like that guy's drunk i'm like that person has a lot of medication in their system and again i don't go checking people out but my spirit will say move away move away and when she does that i notice where she's pointing and i'm like get away from that and sure enough you'll see that car start weaving or they're texting yep. and they're not paying attention 
So your, your own guidance system is active all the time. It's just how much you give it credit. One That's time right. my, spirit, my spirit gave me a visual of like a centipede that had a hundred little antenna pointing out. And she said, ideally 80% of your antenna are pointed in and 20% of your antenna are pointed out, taking a read of what's happening outside of you. But for most people, it's the opposite. Only 20% of their antenna are pointed inward going, and, and they only notice like, well, I'm really hungry. I'm really tired. Yeah, they only notice the extremes. The other 80% of all their awareness and, and, and focus is on what's going on outside of them. Is that person happy with me? Is this person happy with me? What, how, what do they think of me? And so as we learn to just hold the intent to start tuning into our own experience more, we raise our awareness of what's actually happening for us. And then you do know to crack the window or move away from the other car or do these yeah. things because you're you're honoring your intuitive self and your intuitive knowing by paying attention. Yeah. What is optimal there? 50-50 or the... I would say probably 75% of your antenna go inward or to 80% and 20% out because your spirit will tell you just like when you're driving and you're like, ooh, get away from that car, right? I... I can stare at every car to see who's actually texting when they're supposed to be driving, or I can just let my spirit guide me. She's going to be more accurate anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've right. had so many times when I used to play this game when I lived in Florida in a community with lots of roundabouts, I mm -hmm. always could sense that person's coming over or they don't know yep. how to do roundabout. It just right. put up that intention to be guided. Yeah. 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 And <laughs> we're, we're, we're getting off the topic of medical intuition, but isn't it really all related because it's all about the underlying energy will cause disease. Absolutely. And, and what I started to say, and then I interrupted myself was people will come to me for, for medical issues, but they'll remain my client for 20, 25 years because they know their spirit will give them advice on your, your spirit is the best marriage counselor, therapist, life coach, business coach you'll ever find because she shares your same goals and knows so much about the future and the paths that other people are choosing. And so they will come to me for that. The clients that I've had now for, for years and years, I mean, occasionally something medical will come up for them, but now we must again, and they're like, okay, you know, I have a big presentation in front of this company and I really want to sell this contract. And, you know, this one gentleman last week, his spirit said, well, I know you think you're talking to the guy who sits at the end of the table, but the woman to his right is actually making the decisions. And here are the two phrases she's waiting to hear. And he got the contract. And, and so he's like, okay, I'm booking sessions with you all the time. And I'm like, well, it's about a four month wait list to get. So I don't know how often, but, but that sort of guidance that his, he could get in theory for himself if he sat and meditated, but it might take him a couple of hours and we just don't, we don't give our spirits that kind of time. Right. And yeah. so he's busy preparing for his meeting and, and his, he said, yeah, now that you mention it. I feel like I kept looking at her in the first meeting, like, what is it about her? And he said, then I made myself self-conscious and I just stopped noticing her. And I'm like, yeah, you're, that was your spirit trying to get your attention to that. Oh, I love it. Such valuable information for everybody. Wow. Yeah. Do we need to talk about anything else about actual, for the people who are listening now who have physical medical challenges, where do they begin? I would say- Use that guided meditation. It's less than 15 minutes and it will it will walk you through the steps of getting centered and bringing your awareness to that part of your body. One of the things I notice is when people have a chronic condition, say a, somebody gets bladder infections all the time. When I look at their energy, there's not as much energy in their bladders and the rest of their body. And what we start doing is going, oh, I don't like that part of my body. And we start rejecting it. And then it actually gets less energy fed to it and it starts sending out its own alarm signals. And then we uncover that, for instance, a lot of times bladder infections are about being pissed at someone in your family that you don't think you should be, right? Mm. And so when we resolve that and work it through, the other person never even has to know about it and work it through, then the chronic bladder infections go away. And then that person's job is to kind of integrate that energy, like welcome your bladder back into your body and make sure the energy is going everywhere. We don't realize how much we practice that self-rejection. We try to control that part of our body. And as soon as we can't, we're like, well, then I'm done with you, right? And we sort of do it subconsciously and don't even realize. So if you're having chronic symptoms in an area, you know, start with being kind to your body. Like it was a toddler standing in front of you trying to tell you something, right? Just have wow. that level of patience and compassionate listening. And it makes a huge difference when people go and do that guided meditation. They're like, I didn't, I didn't think I'd get anything. 
And I had a woman yesterday tell me, and as soon as I sat there, I had a migraine. I'm like, oh, I don't have time for migraine. I don't have time for migraine. And I did the guided meditation and I heard you're dehydrated and I drank a glass of water with electrolytes in it and my migraine went away. That never happens. I'm like, well, oh. don't say never. <laughs> well, yeah. So, But sometimes it can be that simple, right? It wasn't a message about a locked emotion. It was just, you're really dehydrated. And she was able to fix it. And then so she's so empowered. She's like, I'm going to use this every day. I said, yeah. you won't. You'll probably forget, but that's okay. You know, you have that tool in your toolbox. And I feel like so much of your work and my work is giving people more tools in their toolbox. If you would allow me, as you're talking about healing ourselves from something, it reminded me. And so a little plug here. Okay. I, I created a two-hour workshop called Healing Messages from the Universe. And mm -hmm. we're giving it free right now. Oh, nice. As, as a promotion for people who pre-order my new book that is available now. It's called The Awakened Way. The book is called The Awakened Way. So if anybody's interested in that workshop, just go to my website right at the top of the homepage, just under the banner. There's a link to find that out. But if you are interested in that workshop, all you have to do is get my new book in advance. Yeah. But but it, I had heartburn and was not able to tolerate even over-the-counter drugs. And from the messages from the universe, that went away. I'm assuming your allergies completely went away. Ultimately, yeah, they're completely gone. I got rid of about 50% of them with, with homeopathic remedies. And then the other 50% within two years were completely gone. And now it's funny. I, I live in, you know, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. There's lots of things blooming. I love to garden. There's stuff blooming and there'll be, you know, a layer of yellow pollen on my car and I'm not even sneezing and everyone around me is sneezing enough. And they're Beautiful. like, are you like a robot? How is this not affecting you? I'm like, you know, my body, you know, so much of allergies tends to be your body treating everything as a potential foreign invader, right? It doesn't know what's safe, what isn't. And, and a lot of times allergies are because we're attacking ourselves in some way. That's where mine stemmed from. When I was in law school, I was beating myself up for not being at the top of my class and valedictorian. And, you know, I was up against these people from Harvard and Stanford, and I still thought I should, you know, be at the top. And the harder I was on myself, the more allergic I became to everything, even dust. Well, dust is everywhere, even on the moon, right? So there was no escaping it. Yeah. And I was going to have to face that. And when I realized that's what I was doing, then, you know, my first step was saying, oh yeah, when I have more stress, I have more allergies. But when I got more specific, it's, oh, it's when I have that negative self-talk. And the lovely thing about it, it's not like as soon as I realized that my allergies went away, they started getting minimized. And it got to the point at the end where I would say something negative about myself and the right inside corner of my eye would itch and I would stop and go, okay, what was I just thinking? Uh, yep, you're right. I was beating myself up. So in the course of it, it's such a gift because these chronic symptoms can reach, help us retrain our brain and how we talk to ourselves. So at the end of it, I end up with no allergies and a different way of relating to myself. I love it. And your body gave you the first sign, pay attention. Yep. You're going, you're going to go down that path down the rabbit hole. that you don't want to go down. So we are running out of time here if we want to keep this somewhere around an hour, but I, there's a point we haven't brought up and I know you will resonate with this. People get start coughing, get that little feeling in the back of the throat. What's the first thing we say? Oh, I'm getting a cold or, Oh, I have a cold. I tell yeah. people never say that. Don't, yeah. Don't I'd invite it in. Love for you to address what you do when you have the first symptoms of something. So I think I, I sort of attack it on multiple fronts. I attack it on the physiological level by having this stuff that I call immunity shots. It's made by California Naturals. It's all herbal, but it's colloidal silver and ginger. It does not taste great. I will warn you right now. It's got oil of oregano in it, but it kills virus and bacteria really effectively. So I'm like, reassure yourself that you can that you can take care of yourself, right? Here's a little shot of medicine because then that lets our hypervigilance go down a little bit. And then we say, I got to pay attention to my body and we tune in. What do I need now? Do I just need rest? Do I need to drink a bunch of water? Do I need to, you know, do anything in particular? And I've had people say, oh, I tuned in and I heard like hot water with lemon and I don't ever drink that, but I did it for two days and my sore throat went away, you know, put a little honey in there. And so I don't know if I had a cold or I didn't. I'm like, it doesn't matter. You healed yourself. You worked through it and you felt like in sync with your, your body. So I like you say, don't just start going, oh my gosh, I have, I have the cold or I have this, or I was around a sick kid yesterday. I bet I got his cold, right? You're yep. inviting that in. Yep. And, and we don't want to deny our reality, but we also don't want to encourage what we don't want by focusing on it. Beautiful. Yeah. 
Well, anything we haven't covered, we can take the time to talk about it. Anything you want to share <laughs> that's very important before we end. I, I think just all the stuff we've been talking about, we're just knowing how much assistance is available to you and how much your spirit wants to guide you, right? To just know that you're you're never alone, even when you feel like you are, that the true nature of the universe, as you know, is that interconnectedness of all beings and just how much help is there, like us having our little cards of fairies and crystals and things around. It's just anything that reminds you to let the magic in. I always say the universe loves to show off, just invite it to. Mm. They have fun with it. They have fun. That is great. Yes. The universe definitely loves to show off and they've shown you off in a beautiful way today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Everybody check out christinelang.org. If you were listening and, and don't have that link to the free meditation, I'm sure she has many other gifts on her website. Yeah. Yeah. And your monthly yeah. classes sound fascinating. I think I'm going to sign up actually. So, so I've got to go pre-order your book. I didn't know it was available for pre-order oh. now. Oh <laughs> yeah. 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 It is. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, you are a beautiful soul. Love your spirit. Oh, and, thank you uh, for having me. It was so fun. So honor. fun to have these kind of conversations. It sure is. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you got as much out of this as I did. I'm filled with even more questions, but the next thing I'm going to do is get your book, <laughs> your book and download it tonight and dive in. All right, everybody go have a great, great week and we'll see you back here next week. Hi, everybody. You know, one of the most common comments I get from people when we talk about the spirit world is, I'm not coming back. Well, I have news for you. We come back again and again for the joy of it, for the soul. If you haven't had enough joy in your life, I invite you to join me on my upcoming Awakened Way Mediterranean Odyssey. We're gonna be diving into the Awakened Way concepts that show how you can up-level yourself from the restricted sense of self to the expanded point of view of you as an eternal soul. We're gonna have extended time together with me and with the collective consciousness known as Sanaya. I'll be doing guided meditations that are channeled and Sanaya will be conversing with all of you. I can't wait to hear what they have to say. I can't wait for you to feel their energy. Yes, we're gonna have some deep conversations about those things that keep us in only human mode, but I'm gonna show you, you are far more than only human. You're gonna have a chance to connect with your own higher self and with your loved ones who have crossed the veil, not to mention your guides and even higher beings. But don't worry, we won't take ourselves too seriously. Who is that guy? In addition to our time together during the workshop sessions, we're gonna be visiting some of my favorite places on earth, starting out in Spain, going to France, Italy, Malta, Greece, and Turkey. But don't take my word for how awesome this cruise is gonna be. I'd like you to hear from some of those who went on my Alaska cruise with me last year. Wow, it was amazing. I'd never done anything like this before, kinda of had sworn off cruises. Being with over 500 other kindred spirits, feeling so much love and so much oneness was truly a life-changing experience for me. It was fantastic, I think the highlights were meeting Suzanne and participating in her amazing workshops where she provides us with so much information and um, just the energy of the group that she engendered um, and brought, brought together was wonderful to be part of. And we went on Suzanne's Awakened Way cruise to Alaska and it was just incredible. We had the best time. The real highlights for me were the friends that I made, um, some wonderful people that I met, and so many people who have lost so much, but find ways to be joyful in life. And just by being there, they teach us so much and taught me so much. And it was amazing to meet all these like-minded people. Yes, you know, you have an in-person, you have this amazing community, but for a week, uh, I just, I can't tell you how much fun it was to be with these people that were just, and watching Suzanne on that boat, <laughs> on the stage, um, she sparkled and I feel like everybody just entrained to that high vibration and it was just amazing. Hi everyone. I had the privilege of going on Suzanne Beastman's Awaken Way through to Alaska. The energy of Suzanne 
the energy from my fellow Awaken Way cruisers came together to form this incredible, inspirational, over the moon experience. Uh, the energy on that boat was unbelievable, uh, and everything is uplifting. Suzanne taught me that I am life, which stands for love and full expression, and it's my job to spread the love and the joy and the energy, not only to everyone I meet in the world, but to myself as well. It was an amazing experience. I loved it, and I'm still carrying that energy to this day, months later. If you're ready for more details, or maybe you're ready to sign up and join us, go to my homepage, scroll down to where you see the Awaken Way banner, and click Learn More. Are we on, on spot for a Mediterranean tour in 2024? We're in, man. High five. Bring it. <laughs>